Okay, so let's start the afternoon session. The first speaker is Hironori Oya from Tokyo University, the Tokyo Institute of Technology. The title is Relations Among the Q Characters of Simple Modules over Quantum Group Algebra of Several Thinking Types. Please. Uh, thank you very much for the introduction. And uh, I thank the organizers. Uh, 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 sorry. Uh, I, I thank the organizers for give, giving me a chance to talk in this great conference. And uh, it's my great honor to celebrate Okado Sensei's 60th birthday here. <laughs> so actually, uh, the first talk in my mathematical life was given uh, here. So given in the algebra seminar at Osaka City University, which is now called Osaka Metropolitan University. So it's about uh, nine years ago. And that, uh, at that time, the title was, um, the title of my talk was uh, the construction of reducible representations of quantized functional algebra. So it's related to the uh, representation theory of quantized functional algebra. And uh, yeah, and uh, after the seminar, so Okada Sensei gave me a comment. Uh, and if I remember correctly, so uh, he taught me a paper by Fadef uh, Brashet uh, in Takzabu. And after that, uh, inspired by the work of, of, of uh, Kuniba and Okado Yamada, so I wrote uh, the sole author paper. And actually, this is the first, uh, my first uh, sole author paper. So, and, and actually this year, so 2023, so I'm organizing the conference, uh, which is named uh, Algebraic D Theory and the Representation Theory, the outlet. 2023. And uh, at, in this conference, Okada Sensei will give us a special lecture. So this is an advertisement and registration will start soon. So <laughs> please check the very page. <laughs> so, so what I want to say <laughs> by this slide is, uh, yeah, uh, uh, I appreciate this uh, Okada Sensei's uh, support so very much. So, and, and he uh, helped me at many stages. Okay. Okay, uh, let's go to the mathematical contents. So, in in fact, so this talk is uh, can be considered as a continuation of uh, yesterday's Fujita-san's talk. So, uh, let's record the notation and result uh, which was explained by Fujita-san uh, yesterday. So, this is about the representation theory of quantum loop algebra, and here G is a finite dimension or simply algebra, and. Uh, C denotes the uh, Carter matrix of G, and T is the symmetrizer of G. And uh, associated to the, uh, this D algebra, we can consider the Dreamfeld Jimbo quantum loop algebra. And here uh, we can consider this, uh, the parameter Q as a, a, a non zero complex number, which is not a root of unity. Okay. And uh, we can consider the category of finite dimensional representations of uh, this loop algebra. So this is a very interesting category, and uh, this is an Abelian widget tensor category, but non semi simple and non bridged So it has a very intricate structure, and uh, we would like to study this category. Okay. And this is a bit technical terminology, but uh, which was explained uh, by uh, Fujita-san uh, yesterday. So uh, we uh, fix a map, uh, which is called a parity function, uh, which satisfying this condition. And by using this party function, uh, we uh, fix an index set I hat in this way. Okay, so this is a, bit, a technical point. And uh, we consider the skeleton of this category, uh, which is written as CZZ. So uh, this is a uh, skeleton of this category. And uh, the definition is, uh, and this is defined by using this subset. So uh, in the sense of Fujita sum, uh, this is the Abelian monoidal subcategory supported on this uh, index set. So this set uh, determines the, uh, the place of spectral parameters. Okay, and uh, we have a Q character map, so which is introduced by Frankel and Westin, uh, which gives an injective algebra homomorphism from the Grotantic ring of this category to the uh, this Roland polynomial ring. And simple modules, uh, the parameterization of simple module is given by uh, Terry and Presley. And it, as, uh, as explained uh, yesterday, so uh, we have an uh, analog of the highest weight theory in the quantum loop setting. So, so this is a statement. 
So the irreducible object in this category is parameterized by the monomials uh, in these variables. So this is uh, the element of this set is usually called the dominant monomials. So, um, <laughs> so this is the highest weight. Ah, and the simple object corresponding to this uh, monomial is uh, written as Lm or Lg of m. And so this m is in some sense uh, highest weight. Actually, uh, the Q character of Lm is written in this form. So m plus uh, lower terms in some sense. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is uh, uh, low long polynomial. Ah, uh, uh, low long polynomial. Uh, no, uh, this is the uh, low long polynomial. Yeah, in general. Yeah. Ah, uh, and no, uh, uh, yeah, um, in, in this polynomial, so the monomial uh, may occur. Yeah. But uh, we can define the partial order on the set of monomials uh, or lower monomials. And uh, by this partial monomial, uh, we can say that this is the highest one. Yes. Okay, uh, so this is an example of two characters. So if we consider the, uh, uh, the case when G is equal to SM4, then uh, this, for example, this uh, module is uh, just an affine analog of vector representation. I mean, uh, this is the four dimensional representation and we have the four term here. And uh, if we consider the case when G is equal to SL5, so this is type B2 case. Uh, so this is a three case and this is b two case and and then uh, the the fund so this the simple module of this form is called the fundamental module and q characters of uh, the fundamental module is uh, written in this way so this is uh, actually an affine analog of uh, vector representation and it has five terms yeah here so and the fundamental problem is uh, the the calculation of the simple Q characters, okay, and actually, uh, so <laughs> as I explained yesterday, so uh, this problem is uh, still a difficult problem. Okay, and this is a result uh, which is which appeared in the Fujita Sans talk. So uh, let G one and G two be a simple real algebra over C, uh, such that the, uh, their unfoldings are the same. So and then <laughs> the uh, meaning of unfolding is explained uh, in the next slide. But uh, if we uh, yeah, have uh, these uh, such kind of two Lie algebras, then there exists an algebra homomorphism uh, from here to here. So this is a quantum growth antic ring oh, uh, for this category, uh, for G1. And this is the quantum growth antic ring for G2. And uh, uh, so the main result, one main result is uh, there exists some non-trivial isomorphism uh, between the quantum grotantic ring for G1 uh, to quantum grotantic ring uh, for G2. Uh, whenever there are, uh, the unfoldings of G1 and G2 are the same. Okay, and so, uh, and moreover, this isomorphism uh, preserves the, uh, the canonical basis. I mean, the QT characters of simple modules. So this is the QT characters of uh, simple modules. And uh, this map morphism uh, maps the QT characters of simple module to, to the QT characters of simple modules. So this is the, uh, the result explained yesterday. Okay. And uh, more precisely, so we can uh, construct the family of this kind of uh, isomorphism. So our, our isomorphism can be constructed according to the choice of uh, so-called Q data. Uh, which was introduced by Fujita san and uh, uh, Osan. So, uh, if we take the Q, uh, Q data for G1 and uh, Q data for G2, then we can obtain one uh, isomorphism uh, between uh, the, among the quantum growth and the rings. Okay. And the Q data, uh, I skipped the precise definition of the Q data, but uh, this is the generalization of height function uh, for simple lace case. 
okay. <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, this is also explained yesterday, uh, but uh, we have the application of this theorem. Uh, so one of them is uh, we can prove uh, several positivity results for a non-symmetric case by using uh, this isomorphism. And uh, when G is of type Bn, we can uh, prove the uh, cousinalistic type conjecture by using this isomorphism, uh, by, non, by using the known results for type A. So this, uh, yeah, in this case, uh, so uh, we, uh, we can construct the isomorphism between type A, A2n minus one and Bn. Okay, so this is, an, and this is a list of the uh, folding and unfolding. So uh, for Bn, uh, it's unfolding is uh, An, uh, sorry, sorry, A2n minus one. And uh, for Cn, it's uh, unfolding is Dn plus one. And the unfolding of F4 is E6 and the unfolding of G2 is D4. So this is the correspondence. And this is uh, the correspondence uh, are by our isomorphism. This is an example of the correspondence uh, under our isomorphism. So uh, let's consider the case uh, uh, when G1 is equal to SL4 and G2 is equal to SL5. So this is the correspondence between type A3 and B2. Then uh, this is the result of the correspondence. So, <laughs> Here we should note that this correspondence preserve, uh, preserves neither dimension nor degree of L highest rate. So as I explained before, uh, this module is an affine analog of uh, vector representation. So this is four dimensional module, but uh, the right hand side corresponds to the five dimensional module. This is also an affine analog of vector representation for SL5. So this is four dimensional, but this is five dimensional. So it doesn't preserve the dimension. And uh, it also, it doesn't preserve the uh, degree of L highest rate. For example, so this is the fundamental module. Fundamental module means that uh, its L highest rate is degree one, but uh, the corresponding module is degree two in some sense. So this is uh, uh, non-trivial correspondence. Okay. So what we should do next? So uh, suppose that uh, L, sorry, uh, LTM corresponds to LTM prime uh, by this isomorphism. And actually well, we can calculate uh, this highest weight uh, from this highest weight um, explicitly. Uh, of course, uh, we need a case by case calculation for the explicit computation, but uh, there exists an alg algorithm for uh, computing uh, M prime from M. But uh, this is an highest weight. So this can be seen as an express correspondence between highest terms. So the natural question is the point. So can we calculate lower terms of uh, these QT characters from the lower terms of LT M? So this question is, uh, I think this question is asked by Naito Sensei yesterday after the Fito-san's talk. And I would like to give an answer to this question uh, by looking at the crossed algebra structure of the growth antic ring. So this is the, today's topic, okay. So, and yeah, uh, indeed yeah, we can solve uh, this kind of question uh, by using the crust algebra structure, but uh, the application of crust algebra for the representation theory of quantum affine algebra is uh, not new. So, and this is, so, uh, okay, Hernandez and uh, Leclerc introduced the notion of monoidal categorization of crust algebra and, uh, uh, and one uh, representation category of quantum affine algebra plays a very important role in this theory. So I would like to uh, review the uh, monoidal categorization of crust algebra briefly here. Okay, so uh, let me uh, record the definition of crust algebra. So I, I think uh, there are many experts in this 
room, but uh, to fix the notation, I, I would uh, uh, like to explain uh, the definition of cluster algebra uh, shortly. Okay, first uh, cluster algebra is uh, defined associated, associated with a quiver. So uh, gamma denotes the quiver and uh, gamma zero is the vertex set and uh, gamma one is the arrow set. And uh, without group and two cycles. So this is group, uh, which is not allowed. And this is two cycle, uh, which is not allowed. And, uh, and uh, so this is the, uh, the first data. And the second data is a subset of its vertex set. So uh, in, the, in the terminology of quant, uh, cluster algebra, so this corresponds to the uh, mutable vertex, mutable vertex. Okay. And the, this input data has an information of the seed of the cluster algebra. So let f be a uh, rational function field uh, whose variables is indexed by uh, this uh, the vertex set of uh, our quiver, and a pair is called a seed in this uh, field. If so, the first one is the quiver without groups and two cycles uh, such that. Uh, whose vertex set is equal to the vertex set uh, of the initial data. And uh, second data is uh, the pre-generating pre set of F. So it means that uh, this is the uh, gamma zero tuple of elements of F, which are algebraically independent and it, which generates uh, the, this ambient field. Okay, <laughs> so this is the uh, initial data. And uh, by considering the mutation of seed, uh, we can uh, pro, uh, we can produce the generators of cross algebras. Okay, so this is the definition of the mutation of seed. So uh, mutation is uh, is uh, defined in the in a combinatorial way. So this is the definition. So uh, let uh, epsilon x be a seed in F, and we take a vertex of our quiver then uh, we can consider the mutation in direction K. So which is, which produce a new seed of F. And uh, so let me uh, explain the, uh, the definition of the quiver and the variables. So definition of the quiver is uh, written, uh, is uh, given in this way. So uh, actually uh, by, the, by definition of a seed, so vertex set uh, is equal to gamma zero. So what we should define is the arrow set. And uh, arrow set is uh, defined by uh, these procedures. So uh, let me ex explain it by using an example. So first add one arrow from J to L for each subquiver of the form uh, J to K to L. So this is an uh, example of the, uh, the mutation at a vertex one. So if we want to mutate at vertex one, so we need to find the subquiver of this form. So J one L. So then we can find two subquivers. So first one is this one and second one is this one. So we have two arrows here. So then we can find two uh, subquiver of this form. Then we add two arrows uh, in this way. So this is the first step. And next uh, reverse the arrows in uh, 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 in this <laughs> quiver, uh, which is uh, which are connected with the vertex k. So if we are considering the mutation at vertex one, so we uh, reverse the arrow, which is connected to one. So this is the second step. And at third step, remove the two cycles generated as a result of one and two. So by one and two, uh, we uh, obtain one two cycle here, one two cycle here then uh, remove, uh, we need to remove it. So this is the third step. Then uh, the, this is the, uh, the mutation of the quiver. And we uh, mutate also the uh, variables. And the definition of the mutation of variable is uh, this one. So uh, first, uh, if J is not equal to K, uh, then uh, we, we don't change anything. So in this case, uh, we don't change x2 and x3. So we don't change this one and this one. Uh, but we change uh, the variable at one. 
and this is the, the definition uh, of the new variable. So, uh, so this term can be computed in this way. So we have a map. Uh, sorry, we have an arrow from one to three. Uh, we, we have two arrows from one to three. So we prepare the, the x three squared. So we, since we have two arrows, so we uh, we prepared x three squared, and we have an arrow from two to one, two to one. So uh, uh, so we prepared uh, one uh, x two. So and so and. And and uh, I add these terms. So and divided by the original uh, variable. So the result is x three squared plus x two divided by x one. So this is the new variable. And this is a, a more easy case. So if we mutate the uh, this <laughs> quiver at one, then uh, we can obtain the uh, this quiver. So in this case, we, we don't do uh, uh, the step one, uh, but uh, we need to reverse the arrows connecting to one. So this is the result. And uh, any two cycles uh, uh, don't appear. So uh, this is the mutation of the result. And in this case, so the new, new variable is one plus X two. So uh, we have an arrow from one, uh, one arrow from one to two. Uh, but so we have uh, this uh, this term x two, and uh, we don't have uh, this term. But in this case, we can consider it uh, as one. So then this is uh, one plus x two divided by one. So this is the new value. So this is the rule for mutations. Okay, and this is the definition of the cluster algebra. <laughs> so cluster algebra is the G sub algebra of F. So this is ambient field, and we consider G sub algebra of this ambient field, uh, generated by the set of so-called cluster variables uh, defined in this way. So we uh, take the initial seed in this way. So initial seed uh, consists of our fixed quiver and uh, and the, the variables of this uh, ambient field, Z of J. And if we mutate, ah, so sorry, uh, uh, when the seed in F, uh, this one uh, can be obtained as a, as a finite number of mutations in direction indexed by J, then we can write, uh, so then we write uh, in this way. So gamma Z is mu mutation equivalent to uh, this seed. Then, uh, we collect the all collect all the uh, cluster variables, uh, which uh, which is obtained by the uh, finite sequence of mutations from the initial state. Then uh, this is uh, called the set of cluster variables, and we consider the Z sub algebra of F generated by this uh, set. <laughs> and uh, this is very very known, but uh, <laughs> mutation uh, the yeah, uh, the procedure of mutation is involutive. So this gives an equivalence relation between the seeds. Okay. <laughs> and uh, so this is an example of cross algebra. So, uh, so the quiver is uh, uh, this one, and uh, we only mutate at one. Then uh, <laughs> we can obtain these three, uh, these three seeds. So this seed. Uh, this, this is a new variable. And since uh, this mutation is involutive, so the mutation of uh, uh, mutation of this seed uh, at one is uh, this one. So these three variables are the only uh, only cluster variables for this cross algebra. And uh, we consider the uh, uh, sub algebra generated by these three elements, then we can obtain the cross algebra. Okay, so this is the definition of cross algebra. and. <laughs> Uh, in, in fact, uh, we want to consider the cluster structure on the quantum growth anti ring. And as I explained yesterday, uh, so the quantum growth anti ring is a non commutative deformation of the usual growth anti ring. So it should be a non commutative, non -commutative ring. But uh, by definition, uh, cluster algebra is a commutative algebra because this is a sub algebra of the uh, commutative field. 
So <laughs> the quantum cluster algebra is a non commutative deformation of cluster algebra. And <laughs> Uh, for, so this is uh, the, a very brief explanation of quantum cross algebra. So for the definition of quantum cross algebra, we need to uh, fix an additional data which uh, encodes the non-commutativity of variables. Then uh, from this data, we construct the quantum torus over uh, this uh, ring uh, in the variable in the non-commutative variables, and uh, we con can construct a skew field of fraction of the uh, quantum this quantum torus then uh, the cross quantum cross algebra is defined as a g as uh, t plus minus half sub algebra uh, sub algebra of this uh, skew field of fraction generated by the quantum cross variables so quantum cross variables are defined in this uh, parallel way as the usual cross uh, cross variables and actually this quantum cross algebra is contained in the quantum torus so this is a very, very known uh, property called a uh, long phenomenon. Okay, so this is a brief, <laughs> brief uh, review of the cross algebra and quantum cross algebras. Okay, <laughs> and uh, let me explain the uh, monoidal classification of cross algebras. So <laughs> the idea is the following. So, and, uh, 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 so this notion was introduced by Hernandez and Leclerc. Okay. Uh, so an, an abelian monoidal category C is said to, be, said to be a monoidal categorization of the cross algebra if it satisfies this property. So first, uh, since this is an abelian monoidal category, we can consider the uh, uh, sorry Grothendieck ring. And the first property is uh, this Grothendieck ring is Grothendieck ring is isomorphic to the, uh, this cross algebra. And the second property is very strong, but uh, if uh, cross star monomials are contained in the class of uh, simple objects, then uh, this is called the monoidal classification. Okay. Uh, here, cross star monomials are the monomials in the uh, cross star variables. Okay. And so this is a very, very uh, general terminology, but uh, many subcategories of uh, our category. So our category is a finite dimensional uh, representation category of quantum group algebra. Uh, so, uh, so many subcategories of these categories are known to uh, give an examples, uh, give examples of monoidal classification of certain cross algebras. So uh, first one is, the, so this is uh, just the, uh, the symbol of the subcategory, uh, but, uh, which is, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, there are subcategories written as uh, CL, uh, which is introduced by Hernandez de Clare, and uh, or uh, subcategory CQ, which uh, appeared in Fujita Sam's talk, and uh, C uh, less than C. Uh, and uh, this, this also gives a uh, monoidal mon category categorization of certain cross algebra. And it, actually, so this category is. Uh, important in this talk, so I will explain it uh, later. But anyway, uh, what I want to uh, say here is uh, many subcategories of uh, uh, re finite dimensional representation category for quantum group algebra gives an example, give examples of monoidal classification of cross algebra. Okay, and if uh, once we know that uh, this category gives a uh, monoidal classification of cross algebra, then uh, it produces an algorithm for calculating Q characters of simple modules, uh, which correspond to the cross-star monomials. Uh, so since, uh, as, as I explained in previous slides, so the <laughs> construction of cross-star variable is uh, purely algebraic. So uh, we have an algorithm for, uh, <coughs> for constructing the uh, cross-star variables. But uh, if this is a monoidal classification, then uh, the cross of variables should correspond to the uh, should correspond to the cross of simple object. So uh, this uh, the mutation variation or exchange variation uh, gives an uh, algorithm for calculating the Q character of simple module. Uh, okay. So uh, in, in this sense, uh, the the perspective perspective of perspective of cross algebras uh, given gives a guiding principle for studying uh, this kind of categories. Okay, 
And the simple object which corresponds to the cluster monomial is called a reachable module, uh, which appeared in the first talk. Okay, so let me explain an example of monoidal quadrification. I would like to explain the flavor of monoidal quadrification here. So uh, uh, in, in the case of SL2, uh, we have, uh, there exists a uh, very, very known exact sequence in this category. So we have an, a non split shock to exact sequence uh, of this form uh, in this category. So this is an, uh, these are evaluation, so called evaluation module, and this is trivial module. Okay. Uh, in particular, uh, by going, uh, we, uh, if we go to the growth and pickering or Q characters, uh, we have a relation. Uh, among the Q characters uh, in this way. So this is this becomes a product of Q character of this one and this one, and uh, this is the Q character of this one, and this is the, uh, one is the Q character of uh, trivial representation. Okay, uh, on the other hand, as I explained uh, before, uh, in this cluster algebra, we have this kind of uh, relation. So this is a, a new variable, uh, so and z1 prime is uh, z2 plus one divided by z1. So, uh, so as I explained, uh, we have uh, this kind of uh, relation, and this relation and this relation is of the same form. So this is the uh, flavor of monoidal quadrification. Okay. Actually, uh, this gives an example of monoidal quadrification. I mean, uh, if we write the cell subcategory of this category generated by uh, this module and this module. So uh, uh, in, in physical science terminology, this is the subcategory uh, supported on this part and this part. So this minus one corresponds to Q uh, to the power of minus one, and this uh, corresponds to uh, this one. Okay, and if we write uh, uh, the subcategory, a cell subcategory generated by this module and this module as C1, then uh, the growth antique ring of this, uh, this subcategory is isomorphic to this cluster algebra. And uh, these module, which correspond to the cluster, by cluster monomials, are actually simple modules. So this gives an, uh, in, in this case, so we say that this subcategory. Oh, sorry. Uh, this subcategory is uh, uh, sorry. This category uh, subcategory is the monoidal quadrification of this cross algebra. So this is the point model of the uh, monoidal quadrification. But uh, this version is a very special case of our uh, very special case of a well-known relation in the growth antique ring, which is called the P system for Q recipe module. So uh, for in the general case, we also have this kind of relation uh, in the growth antique ring. <laughs> so this is the uh, precise statement. Uh, so, uh, and this is a very important module. Uh, <laughs> so uh, which is a simple module uh, with uh, some specific highest weight. Okay, so this is uh, called the uh, Kirov with T module and Kirov with T module uh, satisfies some uh, <laughs> yes, yeah, so some specific relation in the growth antique ring, and this is uh, uh, can be uh, yeah, roughly speaking, this is very similar to the relation uh, of the mutation. Okay, and actually, uh, uh, this there exists a quantum analog of T system. Quantum analog of T system means that T system for QT characters of KR modules. So. <laughs> So this is the uh, relation in the user growth antic ring, but uh, we have a quantum analog of this relation, uh, which was proved by another work and uh, FHO. Okay, <laughs> then, uh, so this is an example of the, <laughs> uh, the monitor quantification and uh, the relation in the growth antic ring. And <laughs> so let me explain the important subcategory uh, C less than, uh, or equal to uh, C. So uh, first we fix a Q data of G. So, uh, and actually I don't explain the, uh, the precise definition of uh, Q data, but uh, essential data of Q data is the highest height function, uh, this one. 
so this third one is an uh, essential data of Q data uh, because uh, first two data are uniquely determined from G. So this is the essential data, and this is the height function. Uh, uh, this is a, a map from uh, I tilde to Z. And here I tilde is an index set for G tilde. So this is, and uh, which satisfies uh, some, uh, some uh, conditions. Okay. And uh, moreover, so we can identify uh, our index set with the orbit set uh, of uh, uh, the orbit set of uh, I tilde. So here, this is a uh, diagram automatism uh, appeared appeared in the uh, picture of portings. Okay, and uh, if we identify uh, these two sets, uh, we obtain the canonical projection from I tilde to I. And but and actually, you don't need to uh, uh, remember uh, these kind of energies. Uh, but uh, to uh, uh, to explain our result precisely, I, I explain it here. So here uh, we define uh, the new uh, uh, index set. Uh, so roughly speaking, uh, this is uh, this is a truncation of uh, the the index set I have. But uh, the second term is uh, less than uh, uh, less than the number uh, determined by the height function. So this is the uh, truncation of our I hat. And we consider the monoidal abelian subcategory of uh, our uh, category uh, supported on this uh, index set. And uh, associated to this uh, monoidal subcategory, Hernandez and Leclerc found a cleaver, uh, and actually this is an infinite cleaver, uh, which encodes the P system for KR modules in uh, this category. <laughs> so, uh, here, uh, so, so in some sense, uh, uh, this variation corresponds to the uh, uh, this variation, and this is is the P system. So this variation corresponds to the P, uh, P system. Uh, in, in this case, uh, I said that this quiver encodes the data of P system, and Similarly, uh, uh, non-trivial, but uh, similarly, so we can construct, uh, we can find the quiver, infinite quiver, which encodes the P system of KR modules in this uh, category. So <laughs> precisely speaking, uh, if we mute, consider the mutation um, in an appropriate way, then uh, exchange variation becomes the uh, P, exchange variations becomes the uh, uh, P system. So this is the meaning of encodes, <laughs> and uh, I will explain. Uh, I will show you an example uh, in the next slide. But anyway, uh, Hernandez group Leclerc find found some quivers, and there exists an algebra isomorphism uh, between the uh, cluster algebra and uh, our growth anti twin, growth anti twin for this truncated category, uh, which sends the initial cluster variables to certain k elements. Okay, and uh, recently. Uh, Kashiwara Kim of Park proved that uh, this gives a monoidal categorization of uh, this algebra, uh, this cross algebra. Uh, it means that uh, the cr cr cluster monomials correspond to the cluster of simple modules. So this part is the hard part, but uh, they proved this one. Okay. And uh, this is an uh, example of uh, a quiver. So, and uh, the vertex set, vertex set corresponds to I, I hat. So uh, as appeared in the physical sun stock, so the, uh, yeah, usually uh, we, yeah, uh, yeah, I, I hat is the infinite quiver, uh, uh, is, it's, uh, how to say, uh, I, I hat is the uh, infinite, uh, we quiver uh, continues also in this direction, but uh, we truncate uh, the quiver in this way. And uh, the boundary is uh, boundary is specified by uh, the height function. So this is a, uh, a Q, the role of Q data. So if we fix the Q data, then uh, we can fix uh, the right boundary in this way. And 
And uh, this one is a, uh, our infinite quiver. Okay. <laughs> and so this is the, uh, the quiver for type A5, and this is type B4, five. And actually, uh, if we mutate at here and next at here and next at here, uh, here, 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 and so on, and next here, 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 here. Then uh, each extent duration corresponds to the P system. So this is the meaning of this, these quivers and calls the data of uh, T system. Okay, so uh, in the remaining uh, 20 minutes, uh, or, or 18 minutes, uh, I'd like to explain our main result. Okay, so, uh, so we, uh, we would like to propose a new application of uh, cluster algebra structure in this story. So, and it comes, uh, the, the basic idea comes from this uh, very easy observation. So if, uh, so this is very easy. So if we have two Cs in F uh, and which are, which are mutually, uh, sorry, uh, which are mutation equivalent, then uh, the cluster algebra uh, corresponds to this initial seed is, of course, isomorphic to the cluster algebra uh, associated to this seed. Because uh, the mutation, the operation of mutation is in, involutive. So, uh, so uh, yeah, the starting point does not depend uh, as a, uh, the starting point doesn't affect the, uh, the algebraic structure of the cross algebra so because the mutation operation is involutive. So, okay. So, finally, uh, I, I, we have to uh, collect all cluster variables. So, the starting point doesn't matter. So, this is the meaning of this observation. And, uh, <laughs> sorry. And, uh, by this isomorphism, uh, cluster monomials correspond to the cluster monomials, of course. Okay, and and actually the parallel statement holds for uh, quantum cluster algebras. So this is a very, I'll say, uh, this seems to be a, a trivial isomorphism, but this type of type of isomorphism produces a non-trivial isomorphism in our situation. Okay, so this is uh, our main result. So uh, let's G1 and G2 be a simple real algebra over C and QI be a Q data for of uh, GI, uh, uh, G1 and G2. And assume that uh, their unfoldings are the same. Okay, this is the data of unfolding. So their unfoldings are the same. So first statement is uh, the uh, Grotantic ring uh, sorry, the quantum growth and tick ring of, of this truncated category is actually uh, the quantum growth and tick ring uh, so, so is isomorphic to the uh, quantum cluster algebra, uh, which corresponds to uh, this uh, quiver. And there exists certain uh, non commutative, uh, there exists certain data of non commutativity. Okay. So actually this quantum quantum ring is a quantum cross algebra. And the next one is, uh, and the next one corresponds to the uh, observation in the previous page. So actually, so this quiver, our quiver is mutation equivalent. Uh, the, the, sorry, the quiver for G1 is uh, mu mutation equivalent to the uh, quiver for G2. So quiver for G1 is mutation equivalent to quiver for G2. Uh, uh, for example, the quiver for type A2A minus one is mutation equivalent to quiver for type Bn. So this is the non-trivial point. But uh, once we obtain this, uh, uh, this type of statement, uh, we obtain, uh, we, we can say that the cluster algebra associated to this uh, data is isomorphic to cluster algebra a quantum cross algebra associated to this data. Okay, so this is uh, this part corresponds to the easy observation in the previous slide. Okay, and uh, by one, uh, this is 
this cross, quantum cross algebra is isomorphic to the quantum growth anti ring. Uh, sorry, I forgot P here. Uh, so a quantum growth anti ring. And, and uh, this quantum cross algebra is isomorphic to uh, this quantum growth. Uh, this quantum cross algebra is isomorphic to this quantum growth on the ring. Okay, sorry, I forgot T here. So, uh, so in this uh, cross algebra -like way, so we can obtain the uh, isomorphism uh, between the quantum growth on the rings. But uh, actually, so the statement is that uh, this isomorphism co coincides with our previous isomorphism. So our isomorphism. So in particular, so this isomorphism maps the uh, QT characters of simple module to QT characters of simple module. This is non-trivial uh, from the uh, cross algebraic argument. Uh, uh, ah, yes, 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 uh, actually. Uh, so this is the next remark. Uh, thank you for your comment. So, uh, yeah, I wrote that uh, this is mutation equivalent to this one, but uh, uh, as I showed before, so uh, this is an uh, infinite quiver. And actually to obtain this one from uh, this one, we need to consider the, uh, uh, the mutation sequence of infinite length. But uh, actually, so this is, uh, this is uh, well defined since uh, it is uh, in some sense locally finite. Uh, I will show you an example uh, later, but uh, so we need uh, uh, we need uh, the mutation sequence of infinite lengths, but uh, this is uh, uh, in some sense locally finite, so we can uh, define. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, we can obtain the very defined the definition of uh, this mutation sequence. Okay. And moreover, so uh, by uh, investigating the mutation sequence above, so uh, actually we can obtain the express mutation sequence here. So, uh, and by investigating it, so we can obtain the following. So this is the answer to the first, uh, our question. So with the assumption above, there exists an explicit uh, by rational transformation between the uh, uh, variables, uh, which makes the QT characters of simple modules uh, into the QT character of simple module in this one. So it says that uh, we can uh, we can realize uh, this, our isomorphism uh, by just an uh, by rational transformation of variables. Uh, sorry, this is a, a sketch of the proof, but uh, before going to it, I would like to show you an uh, example of uh, the mutation sequence. I will show an example uh, of mutation sequence from type A to type B. <laughs> and so, so this is a very big quiver, but uh, uh, please uh, memorize this one. So, so type A5 quiver is of this form. So this is very uh, simple form. And type, type B quiver is of this form. So uh, it's difficult to see, but Yes. So uh, the uh, the typical point is this one. So first, we we have an arrow. Uh, uh, we have a cycle of this form. So of this form, and we have a cycle of this form. So we have a cycle. Please remember this kind of cycle. So this we have this kind of cycle. Okay. Okay. So this is an, uh, the typical feature of uh, this quiver. And yes. So this is an uh, quiver for type A5. And yeah, uh, I will show you an, show you a uh, mutation sequence which makes uh, this quiver. Uh, yeah, which makes uh, this quiver to the quiver for type B, type B. All right. oh, sorry, oh, I'm so sorry. Sorry. Oh. Uh, 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 uh. 
So this is the table for type A5. So first mutate at here, next here, here. And go to this one, this one, here. And go to this one. So this is the meaning of uh, locally finite. So actually, uh, so when mutate at here, so it doesn't affect, for example, this part. Okay, so the, this mutation sequence is yes, uh, locally finite. And we rearrange the vertex in this way, then we can obtain this kind of cycle. So which is, which appeared in the type B2 cleaver. So this, so this is the cycle which appeared in type B2 cleaver. Okay, so this is the end. And, and we uh, iterate this kind of mut uh, mutation sequence uh, infinitely many times, then uh, the type A quiver becomes the type B quivers. So this is our statement. And uh, as shown here, so, uh, so this kind of mutation sequence is locally finite. So I mean that uh, when, mutate, uh, we, when we mutate the vertex at here, uh, it doesn't affect, for example, this part or this part or this part. So, so some uh, some effect uh, is concentrated on uh, in some of this part. So this is the meaning of locally finite. Like, uh, the okay. hmm? uh, if you cut in the middle then you will have A3 and then LA3, so quivers, and then you can do by a wonder. So uh, if, if we cut the, yeah. this quiver here, uh, you cut and then, yes. so then you have vertices with uh, uh, so one associated to so one A3 and another A3, so mm -hmm. A3, and then you just insert one to another. And then you also do the same system A to M. Uh, and then it's just you cut, and then you have a n a n, and then you just uh, mix up. So here you can see that the two a three cleaver. Uh, two a three cleaver. Yeah, in if you cut in the middle, this is just yes. Uh, uh, but... I alternate. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, I alternate. Uh, yeah, but, but uh, we, we need to, uh, how to say, uh, write an arrow in, in, the, in, the, in the middle row in this way. So this is the non trivial I think. And this, uh, this is not just like, uh, how to say, uh, the, uh, just a concatenation of two quivers. Yeah, yeah yes. Uh, thank you for this point. Okay. <laughs> and uh, yes. Um, and actually, so by uh, looking at uh, this mutation sequence uh, carefully or uh, by uh, observing uh, this. Uh, <laughs> this this uh, <laughs> mutation sequence, uh, we can obtain the, uh, the bidirectional transformation between the uh, variables, uh, which makes the QT characters of simple modules in G1 into QT characters of simple module in uh, G2. So this is an uh, example of uh, our formula. So we uh, so this is actually uh, uh, the bidirectional transformation. So for example. So these variables, some ah, so this is a substitution formula for uh, from B two to A three. So this is the variable for B two, 
and th this is expressed uh, in the variables uh, in, in A3. And sometimes this variables uh, goes to this kind of rational function. But anyway, uh, if we substitute each variables uh, by this, uh, 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 these elements, then uh, it transforms the uh, QT characters for uh, or Q characters for uh, type B uh, into the Q characters for type uh, A. So this is so this is an example. So uh, if, if we apply uh, the, uh, this formula to this uh, Q character, so I mean uh, we substitute uh, uh, these elements uh, one by one for these uh, variables then we can uh, obtain this kind of rational function. But uh, here, uh, some interesting cancellation occurs. Then uh, the last one is this one. So actually this is an, uh, the example of Q characters, uh, which I uh, showed you before. So uh, this is the Q characters for the affine analog of the vector representation uh, for SO5, so it has, five terms, but uh, by applying this uh, formula, we can, uh, and by applying this formula, some cancellations occur. And, and finally we obtain uh, four terms, just four terms. And it corresponds to the Q characters for this, uh, Q characters of this four dimensional module. So this is our correspondence. Okay. Okay, uh, so this is the last slide. So uh, I would like to mention here the, uh, some uh, further direction of this research. So, and uh, yeah, the name of this conference is uh, Integral Systems and Quantum Groups. And my result is related to the quantum groups. But, uh, and uh, uh, to be honest, I, I'm not so familiar with the, the theory of integral systems, but uh, Q characters should correspond to some <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, uh, should uh, re should relate it to some uh, integral systems because this is uh, uh, by definition. Uh, uh, so this is the definition of Frank Everstein. So this is by definition Q characters are can be considered as some transform matrix. So, and we obtain some relation between the, the Q characters of. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so some some transformation formula for the Q character of simple module. So uh, if you have some uh, comments from the perspective of integral systems of the uh, about this result, uh, it would be greatly appreciated. Uh, and 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 this is not the related to today's topic, uh, but uh, but rather than. Uh, related to yesterday's topic, but uh, since we have an isomorphism between the growth and ring of type B2, for example, type B2, uh, so sorry, for example, type BN uh, and uh, growth and ring of type A2N minus one. So uh, we can obtain the family of simple modules in uh, G1, whose Q characters uh, give a solution of a T system of type G2. Since we have an uh, isomorphism among the quantum growth anti ring or growth anti ring uh, with respect to simple objects. So, uh, so uh, I, I would be happy if uh, it has some uh, interesting imp implication uh, from the uh, B point of the integral systems. Uh, for example, the T systems, the or origin of origin or uh, yeah, uh, the important uh, topic uh, related to the, the T-system is the, the, uh, one of the important topic is uh, fermionic type formula. So the, uh, for the fermionic type formula, so that uh, the T-system is the, 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 the one of the essential ingredient. So I, I'll, uh, so I would be happy if this, <laughs> Uh, our results is related to some uh, this kind of topic, and uh, extend this story to the category all for quantum affine Borel algebra. So this this is uh, this category 
uh, in some sense, this category can be considered as a limit of uh, the, quant the finite dimension representation category for quantum loop algebra. So we would like to consider the extension of our, our story to uh, this category. So this is uh, for the direction. And uh, actually our formula <laughs> derives from uh, purely algebraic computation uh, of the quantum groups. So we should uh, investigate the categorical or conceptual understanding of uh, our formulas. Okay, uh, thank you very much for your attention and happy birthday, Okam Sensei. Are there any questions or comments? How to solve the actual main problem? Sorry. How to solve the main problem? The main problem is just to compute. Mm -hmm. uh, Characters. Ah, yeah, yes, yes. Yeah. So, so uh, our substitution formula states that uh, if we consider this kind of substitution, uh, we can obtain the QT characters of, uh, yeah, uh, for example, in this case, for uh, QT characters of type A3 from the QT characters of type uh, B2 by applying this substitution. So this is our main result. And uh, this answer to the uh, our, our question. So, I mean, uh, uh, before this talk, we, uh, we can only know the correspondence between the highest term, but using, by, but using this formula, uh, we can uh, calculate also calculate the lowest uh, lower terms. So this is the lower terms uh, from the lower terms here by applying this substitution. So this is the answer. Uh, well, you know okay. yes. terms, then you automatically can compute lower. Sorry, automatically. If you know, if you know highest terms in yeah. the model, then you can automatically compute lowest. Ah. Uh, Thank you, Hart. Uh, to, to answer this kind of question, we need to consider, uh, for example, the causalistic type algorithm. But uh, sorry, so uh, today's our today's question is is this one. So can we calculate the lower terms of uh, this one from the lower terms of this one? And I could answer this question by substitution formula. If you know uh, Z and prime, you can compute it. Oh, uh, if cosmic type conjecture is available. Yeah. Okay, any other questions, comments? Oh, could you tell me an example of non reachable modules? Sorry, no. So, could you give me an example of non reachable modules? Not, not simple modules which are not reachable. Uh, sorry, uh, we, uh, sorry, simple module which are Le reachab reachable. Ah, so, uh, which are not reachable. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, uh, sorry. <laughs> uh, 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 no, uh, I, I don't remember the precise highest weight, but uh, there are no non reachable, uh, uh, non reachable modules. Could you tell me how, how to determine whether it is reachable or not? Uh, in my opinion, it's a, it's a difficult problem, I think. Yeah, I think it, it's, uh, It's a difficult problem, but uh, uh, yeah, one, one way to consider this kind of problem is this one. So uh, if the module L is uh, reachable, then it corresponds to the cluster variable. And uh, by definition, the twice of cluster, our square of square of cluster variables is again a cluster monomial. 
uh, because uh, cluster monomer is by definition by definition uh, the monomer in cluster variables. So if the module is uh, reachable, then uh, its square is again a simple module. But there exists a uh, simple module uh, whose uh, uh, there exists a simple module L, um, which satisfies that uh, L tensor L is not uh, simple. Then, uh, if you find this kind of module, then this is not reachable. Okay, thank you. Ah, yeah, yeah, yes. Uh, this is called the imaginary. Yes. Thank you for your comment. And recently, I think uh, uh, Cherry. Uh, Found a family of non reachable module, I think. <laughs> okay. Well, is then every non, is, yeah, is that very equivalent to non reachable? I, I, I think it, it's, it's not. Plus, it's more. Okay. Yeah, yes. But uh, uh, in my understand, uh, understanding, this kind of problem is a difficult problem. So which one is reachable and which one is not reachable? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, yes, for type A, B, A, B, D, E. Yes. And for reachable, uh, uh, characteristic type algorithm for, uh, for any type. So this is our result. Okay, are there any questions? No? Okay, red thanks to Fika again. Thank you. Start the next talk uh, at three o'clock.